Well, it's absolutely crucial to open up places of detention to inspection by independent bodies because people who are detained are completely at the mercy of those who detain them. They can't escape, they can't take responsibility for their own care. They're in the hands, they're dependent on others for their safety, for their survival and for their well-being. We know that actually when you give that sort of power to people, no matter how decent they are, that there is a potential for abuse unless there are proper checks and balances, unless there is visibility. And being on the ground and seeing what's actually happening is crucial. There's inevitably a gap between the, what the law says should happen and what really happens. And preventing torture is about narrowing the gap. Preparation is critical, critical to the success of the, of the visit. Firstly, there's a lot of preliminary work. We ask for information uh, on the centre, up-to-date details of detainees, um, which countries they're from, the breakup of men, women and children. We also talk to community groups who may have had some involvement with the uh, centre, may have had people who'd visited the centre to get uh, background from them. We, we conduct around 60 visits every month in the different locations. Of course, when we do these regular preventive visits, we usually, uh, uh, first and foremost, we meet with the administration of the prison, and then we, we, we visit uh, new prisoners, because at the very beginning of the arrest is the most dangerous period, because this is where the interrogation takes place and cases of torture and ill treatment takes place. So the first concern is to ensure that the personal safety of the person is being uh, granted. Uh, when we go to look at uh, people in held in detention centres, we, we zero in on the welfare. How long have you been here? Have you been mistreated? We'll try to document that. Uh, we also have a standard format, uh, which is for officers to fill in, uh, which applies to immigration, which applies to lockup and detention. Since we visit so many places, it's important to have a uniform format to gather information. It's almost always the same team of people who go to immigration centres. Uh, they supplement each other in the questioning and they knew exactly uh, what signs to look out for. Well, you need a range of skills in, in a team. I mean, it's not a one-person activity, it really isn't. But within the team, you need to have people who are clear about the human rights perspective and the human rights focus, because that's what preventive work um, must involve in this situation. You need also to have people who have medical skills, as well as legal skills, as well as skills in listening to people and understanding what they're saying and what they're not saying. We monitor um, every room. For example, I was uh, visited in the pretrial detention. I visit every room, every room. 191 room. I should be every room checked in which condition are you live in, which kind of food are you eating. I asked everybody. And this year it's a very successful, uh, very good work and when I meet each person. We have to be completely clear with staff that we talk with prisoners alone and there are no witnesses and that that's um, something uh, which they must uh, accept and which also they must not afterwards try to unpack for themselves. They can't go to the prisoner afterwards and say, what did you say to them? Sometimes they say that they are afraid that some bad thing is going to happen because they, they, have, they have told us about the issues they are in the kind of torture or ill treatment that had been happening in the facility. 
though uh, even after saying all these things also they they feel like that this is the opportunity that they get to raise their concerns conditions of uh, of uh, of prisons we do that and uh, these uh, these are issues are of concern with the space with the kind of food they get with the medical treatment so here we can sometimes take initiatives and we do take initiatives of doing medical days inviting some of the medical relief committees or uh, we are being called by the prison administration asking us to provide some kind of medicines because of there's shortage of specific medicines sometimes uh, in cooperation with the prison administration we really uh, intervene uh, we see some of the problems uh, are caused by the lack of enough resources and infrastructures it is very important to to build up that cooperation uh, with the PSD because sometimes after we finish our um, visit as always as as everywhere if we have some some comments some concerning the the uh, let's say the administrative at the at the prison we go to the to the director of the prison and we tell him about uh, these comments our recommendations how to deal with this issue i think to build up this cooperation between them to to convince them that we are working uh, working on the same field for the same um, object objective this is very important we try to have a one one and a half hour um, set of preliminary observations that we discuss with the people on the spot immediately because there is nothing like giving people immediate feedback and starting to talk about what the good things are that they're doing and how they could replicate that and how there are problems in some areas and how they might overcome those and that immediate feedback is the precursor for the more detailed feedback. Once we've finished our visit we write up a report of the visit and that is a lengthy process, they're, they're quite detailed reports uh, and then we show that report to the department and seek any comments that they may have about things like factual errors, etc, etc. We won't necessarily change our report based on their comments, but we'll consider them. When a national human rights institution or a national preventive mechanism, a national, essentially a national visiting body, makes a visit to a place of detention, if they want it to have a preventive effect, they first of all need to check um, the information that they have, um, they also need to check on its conformity with the various norms, either national or international. Uh, they then need to make, formulate recommendations, uh, recommendations to directly to the authorities that they went to visit, but also recommendations to other government authorities and then, then following up on it. It therefore should be an ongoing process rather than just one-off visits uh, um, uh, to places of detention.